Dads, Lads and Kebabs. Sponsored by Ghostalware. And now, it's Dads, Lads and Kebabs. Boom! Welcome to another Sunday afternoon show of Dads, Lads and Minus Kebabs. kebabs. No kebabs, no kebabs at all. Oh, I need that, don't I? Sorry. Hello. Sorry, I'm not even here. I'm not even with it today. I'm a bit behind. It was a bit of a rush job, actually, getting out of bed for uh, half past seven at night. Wow. It's crazy. Nah, not really. Just uh, cracking a bit. Is that, is that a, a little can opener that has a penis to undo the bottle? Nice. I like that. That's pretty cool. <laughs> Shit, KFC. It's fucking oh. horrible. Have you just had KFC? Oh my god. How did you think? What do you think of it now? Is it the one? Put it this way I should have just cut out the middleman and put it straight into the toilet because it didn't really last very long inside me. So. Oh. oh. Look, another beer again. What about another beer? This is this is becoming a regular thing. Just getting loose. <laughs> Just getting loose. Just getting yeah. loose. Before we get started, I do have to say yeah. a massive thank you for the great team at Ghost Aware. They've not only sent me this. Oh, nice. They've sent, they've sent me this beanie, but they've also sent me one in four different colours, as long as a snapback as well. So... Thank you very much, Ghost Aware. Um, if you want to buy Ghost Aware shit, merch, not shit, merch. It's not shit. Contact us. No. Contact us. Not me. I don't work for him. But I'll get my stuff bing, bing, free. Bing. So yeah. if, you, if you want something, hit me up. <laughs> and he'll sell you a hat that he got for free. <laughs> Why not? Yeah. yeah. I mean, I got a few, a few. But yeah, thank you very much. Goes to work. Oh, nice. Today, today, Sunday, Sunday today. So, my day has been very fulfilling. I have figured out. Well, I was informed. <coughs> excuse me, please. I was informed on Friday that I had twenty units of online training for my work to complete before Monday. So I have, I have done thirteen so far while watching football as you can probably see my screen keeps changing color to blue to green because i've got sky sports on behind me and i just watched tottenham come back from three nil down to to level three all and then in the last 10 seconds of the game they lost four three <laughs> so let's all laugh at tottenham because you know they're shit <laughs> yeah sorry I can't, I, can't, I can't get into football like that I What's like, the matter with you? Oh fuck! No, no, like, and I get it. You're not a geezer and all that jazz. What? Oh, <sighs> that's just ridiculous. Why is you? Why you shouldn't sit that close to your screen, mate? No, I don't. When I watch it, it's just that I'm here for, you know, filming with you guys. So, yeah. But yeah. yeah I just can't get into football like that. For me, it's it, like I like dragon run. I like football. I can play football. No. I like watching football, but. I can't become one of them diehard supporters. I can't. Mm. I can't. I can't stay on top of it. I've got. There's not enough time in the world for me to stay on top of football. It start. It starts when you're young. You can't. I don't think you can suddenly get into it just like the drop of a hat. I don't think it, it sort of works like that because you have to find your passion for when you're young, and get taken the piss out of when you're young when your team loses. You know, it's like a, it's like a rite of passage. When, you, when you're young, we're not no, young. No, <laughs> we are not. The kids that used to switch teams all the time. Just oh, I hate them. them. Just shoot them. Glor Glory Get rid of them. What are they called? Yeah, yeah. Glory hunters or whatever. Um, yeah. I was always. I'm gonna say I was always Man United. Like I like them. <laughs> and then, but then for me, that's because I don't know. I grew up around it. I don't know. Maybe. Right. Yeah. But for me, but yeah, I mean, 
boxing for me, I'd stayed on top of boxing. I will say that. So. <laughs> Yeah. I stayed on yeah, for me that was that was a good one. Yeah. But have you seen the sports. have you seen the, the the recent social media videos of Mike Tyson sparring again? He's there. like sixty odd and he's a machine. There's Jeez. no way I would ever want to be punched by that man. So is George Foreman. Yeah. He is a beast. And he's yeah. older than Tyson. And look at him punching the bag. It, it's it's absolutely crazy how if you've got it you've got it you know like these natural natural boxes mm -hmm. absolutely crazy what do you <clears throat> what do you think about the um the youtuber boxing that's getting bigger and bigger every couple of months there's a an event with about 10 fights on i don't think it's embarrassing do you though <laughs> yeah I hate it. What? I think it's fucking... give me your reasons boxing over the years has been there's been so many fighters coming up through the game mm. that have come in, shook the whole game up and moved on. The problem is with these YouTubers, they, they're wanting to have a go at people that have trained their entire career to get these fights. And yet these YouTubers are coming in because they've got a big following on one platform. It automatically gives them the following of a younger crowd that don't really understand boxing, but they yeah. understand it enough to say, Oh, I'm going to cheer on KSI. I'm going to cheer on Logan Paul or Jake Paul. Like, and I don't know. It just takes like boxing for me is it's big in my in my like football for you yeah. is big. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, if if some of these YouTubers tomorrow was going to say, right, well, you know, they've just signed for you know, Logan Paul's just signed for Arsenal. Well, him and KSI technically have because they their prime drink sponsors Arsenal. But hey, hey. Right. But, but I'm talking yeah, about but I, I understand the, the thinking in that because that would be sort of the equivalent, but that would never happen because unless they're good, they wouldn't get in. To, to have a boxing match, you don't need to be good. That's unfortunately, but I can see what you're saying. You you want the box, the sport of boxing to be respected mm -hmm. because, as it's always been, but now it seems easy because a, a YouTuber wants to fight someone else, fight another YouTuber, want to fight a boxer. And just because they got following and money, they can do that. Unfortunately, that's what promoters, but don't like get me wrong, TV like, shows, you know, that's what they on want. It both sides of the fence because as much as these YouTubers want to do it, these boxers are happy to, you know, take, take the, that. Take yeah. the payday. I, mean, I, if I loved, loved early Mayweather. Early Mayweather was, for me, a phenomenal fighter. And, yeah. and he still is. Don't get me wrong, he still is. And I don't think there's anyone that's going to outbox him in terms of skill. However, I don't know. Like, you know, if David Beckham come back to United tomorrow and said, right, well, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to go back and put, put my boots on again, put my Predators on again. He could probably he could probably play ten minutes a game. He'd probably be all right with ten minutes, but probably not. He wouldn't be able to last, I don't think. But he's still got the skill. He's still got the skill to do the crosses, the free kicks, all that. He can still do that. He will never probably lose that. Oh, yeah. But it's, it's I, the stamina, the running, the fitness. That's I what he'll like lose. the charity games where they've played. Do you know, like, where, like, all the United yeah. players have played together and all that sort of stuff. And yeah, yeah. You think, like, you think, Jesus, man, that is just proper winding back the ears of the days. Okay. Tommy Fury, Jake Paul. Well, yeah, so what you obviously don't agree with the YouTuber boxing really, but that was obviously probably the best YouTuber boxer at the moment against Tommy Fury, the crapper brother of Tyson Fury. Did you watch it? What did you think? I I sit on the fence because Fury family for me they're a ph like phenomenal bunch of boxers. Yeah, Tyson being the big brother. Yeah, okay, he's got it. He's the big brother. He's the big box. Um, again. I think Tommy's a really good boxer. Um, my mm. my scorecard on that was him and Jake were very, very similar matched. It could have yeah. been either way in my eyes. Like, it would have been embarrassing for Tommy to lose 100%. He would have been good. He would have been done. <laughs> yeah, um, I don't think know, he could live that down. It, they were very similar matched. It was kind of like when McGregor fought Mayweather. Everyone thought 
hold on a second, this is the first time this has been done. There's been a couple of times, you know, I think it was years ago when it was like Hulk Hogan had a fight with Mike Tyson or some shit like that. Yeah. Yeah, like, they're, they're wrestling and boxing have, have crossed paths a few times, they've, haven't yeah, they? they? They've tried to cross, all that sort of stuff. And it didn't really work. And it was kind of all a bit of a, a, bit of a gimmick. But the problem yeah. is with that, it's all like when, when Mayweather <clears> and McGregor fought, it was kind of like, well, actually, McGregor's a really good striker, really good ground worker, really good this. However, Mayweather's very, very quick. And yeah. yet, the, the, the boxing for them was like, actually... McGregor has to be pulled back a few times to say, look, you, you know, you're, you're going over the top a bit too much. <laughs> Get him on the floor. <laughs> yeah, he, he, was, he, was trying to, he was he was trying to neck lock him and stuff like that and trying to pull him. Yeah. And it was like, well, you're not understanding the fundamentals of boxing. However, again, very similar matched. But yeah, that was a good fight. The fucking, the, the, May, the uh, Jake Paul and uh, Tommy Fury was like a big cuddle for me. Yeah. You watch the fight, it was just a big cuddle. But then you got to look at times. you got to look at this point of view. Tommy's been boxing since what he was three years old, and Jake's been boxing for like three years. And for Jake to come Jake's up that level, a very promising boxer. He's I, I think he he's got the ability to be really good. But then he's not done really anything else f- apart from boxing camp to boxing camp all over America, Canada for the last three years. So he's not really done anything else with his YouTube career apart from boxing camp. Mm -hmm. That's all he's done. So he is probably working harder than most boxers are because he needs, he needs to catch up very quickly. Yeah. I I think the upsetting factor of the upsetting factor of obviously where the boxing games at the moment is, is that these younger boxers that are coming up don't have the background to promote their stuff. No. You know, Jake Paul could Jake Paul could throw a fire out there and people would want to sniff it. Do you know what I mean? Exactly. Like, he, it's, it's easy for him. And I think now boxing's got to the stage, big time boxing has got to the stage of promotion. It's 90% promotion, 10% is about the fight. Yeah. People love the build up to fight. They love the... You know, and people believe all that stuff that happens, press conferences and pushes and throwing bottles of water and that sort of stuff. People, people think like, oh, you know, it's all big hype. Most of it's staged. Most of it is, you know, the, most fighters are really good friends before they have a fight. And then they get down to a fucking press conference. Yeah, you but know? look at, but you got to look at it this way. The, with Jake, you, he brings the money for these mm-hmm. boxers. Mm-hmm. Obviously, he's, he's fought a couple of, MMA fighters, which is really pissed off uh, Dana White because Dana White doesn't pay his fighters half of what they should be. They're all very low, aren't they, compared with boxers. So, obviously, he always takes the piss out of Dana White trying to, you know, oh, I'm going to give them their payday they deserve and try and promote. They, to be fair, he's actually trying to get the, the MMA and the UFC to have a yeah. better wage structure I mean, for, the, for the fighters anyway. You know. You've got to think as well, like on a, on a on a lower low budget scale, where I, I don't know where this fight even happened. And again, I'm going to mention it, and you'll be like, "Yeah, yeah, what?" Saudi Arabia, I'm, wasn't it? No, 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 no. Well, no, why? I'm talking about Mayweather had a fight the same night, no, night before, with that Aaron from Jordy Shaw. Oh yes, oh I heard about that. Yeah, I don't even know who won that. Huh? You heard about it? That's it. That's it. Didn't want to watch it. It wasn't major streamed. There was no publicity. It was there was no hype about it. The, the stadium was dead. It was held at the O2 and it was dead. Oh wow! Dead. And and you think to yourself, Mayweather's putting his name to this. He's putting his name, his skill, his reputation to this. And f- fair play to the Aaron kid. Like you know, if someone said to me tomorrow, no, would you, would you want to fight Mayweather? I'd be like, fuck yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes, please. He can punch I'll, me for for a few million. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll get knocked out three or four times just to become a fucking millionaire. Exactly. Um, but then, but then you've also got uh, Jake's next fight is against Nate Diaz, isn't it? In August, I, I think. I don't know. If if yeah. Nate is out of prison by then, because yeah, obviously it, he had a fight in the street, didn't he? Yeah. Yeah, he punched the lookalike man. <laughs> yeah, like Logan Paul's lookalike. Yeah, he, he didn't he neck lock him until he passed out on the floor, didn't he? In the street somewhere, but you know. But then that's another thing, right? Is 
and this is completely off topic, but committing crime in America, these motherfuckers are brave. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? <laughs> like... Fucking no. headlocking someone in the street like it's your God-given right to do that. <laughs> I'll it's do like, that. Fucking hell, man! Imagine yeah. like, like me. If some, tell me, two police officers come pick me up with fucking guns on their side, I'll be shit in my pants. But then, in America, they try and fight back, and then they get shot. <laughs> oh, whoops! Shouldn't have done that. <sighs> yeah, man. But yeah, boxing and YouTubers, man. I I think it's. Uh, I think it's a stupid advantage on both parts. I can see why people are doing it for money and publicity and all that sort of stuff. Mm. And I can, but these YouTubers haven't had to slug it out from when they were seven years old in the boxing gym, you know, no. struggling, to, struggling to get by and can't buy headgear, can't buy gloves, gloves and, yeah, can't afford it. Yeah, like if you're walking into a boxing gym and you've got the best gloves, the best headgear, the best trainers, you've got somebody like when I was boxing. Like, especially with mates and stuff like that, and training all the years that I trained, and going to the classes and everything, like, you'd struggle to get people to hold pads for you and stuff like that. You'd be like, oh, you know, can you come in and hold pads for me tonight so you can do pad work with somebody? I used to pay £25 for an hour for somebody to hold pads for me, just so I could get faster at it. And you think to yourself, like, these people have, these people have got people on speed dials, hey, I'll come to your house now, I'm going to do pad work, it's fine. I'll, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll do it for free. And you know, wear my clothing. Yeah, you know, here's here's like two thousand dollars worth of gloves, and you know, what I mean, it's fucking mm. ridiculous. <laughs> promote me. <laughs> yeah, promote me. That's the thing, right? You're a celebrity now. People give you shit, and they say promote me. Half exactly. these people get the shit and don't promote it because they're like, mm, I don't want it. I don't want it. <laughs> I wonder how many people have lived off celebrity endorsements of like brands and stuff. I think the majority of Love Island people. That's all they mm. do for it. For for 11 months of the year, and then the next series is on, and that's it. They're gone. They're gone. Who are you? Who are you? Do you know what I mean? Bloody boohoo and pretty little thing and all that. I'll yeah, yeah. tell you what, we've not discussed, and we, uh, we should discuss it, because this can be just an added bonus, is um, James Corden, The Late Late Show. Have you watched any of that or know much about his uh, the deals that he's been offered? Yes, I saw a TikTok today about 50 it. Million. 50, 50 million. 50 million. For so many stay. years, yeah, yeah. I, I right. actually saw it. It was about a four and a half minute TikTok of him with Howard Stern mm. on the some. I think his podcast. They, they yeah. fucking love him. They love him over there. Like he had Biden, like saying thank you for the, you don't know how much you've done for this country and all that sort of stuff. And it's like, what the fuck? He's a TV presenter. <laughs> like, ha- half of, half of the UK don't want James Corden back. I saw lots of things. In in the press and so like, oh, I keep him. We don't want him. No, I, don't I, I don't think I don't know if it play over here. Like, that's the thing. Like, I don't know if TV shows over here. But I, I watch fifty fifty. I'll probably watch fifty percent UK shows, fifty percent American TV shows. Um, but I don't know. James Corden will come over here and it'd be offered family fortunes. Yeah, you know, it's not going to pay the same. No. But then again, I don't think he's coming over here to do his work. I think he's realised he's got enough money to take some time off. It's where he said it's where he want him and his wife were deciding where he wants his kids to to have their important years, like their teen years, finishing school, getting a job, college, and that. Where LA. he obviously LA. he obviously, he obviously doesn't want them. I wouldn't want my kids in America. Fucking hell, it's crazy out there. You know, school shootings, police killing everybody. He wants to be able to go go out for lunch with his dad. Mm-hmm. Rather than booking months in advance, or oh, that'll be over in like three months' time, from what I've understood anyway. So it's more of a family thing. He turned down fifty million. You mu- there must be something amazing to turn fifty million down, but maybe money doesn't buy you everything. So I was talking to my missus about this earlier, and um, yeah, if you if you could go back to a certain time in your life and slow it down a bit, what would it be? In what sense? Just, just so you don't have to just grow up so quick. If you could go back to a certain point, and you think I could relive, I could relive those couple of years and just take my time with it and enjoy it more. Would it be? I don't know. To be fair, never like thought about that. Years, your twenties. Oh no. Uh, maybe when my kids were little, maybe. Slow them down a bit. 
Or maybe not when they were so little. When they were like five and six, maybe. So that you enjoy the moments because now they're all old. They don't want to see their dad. They don't want to do nothing with their dad, really. You know, they don't need... They don't need us, you know. Does that... Does that apart from for, apart from for money lifts, yeah, lifts <laughs> take yeah. me here, Dad. Can I borrow a fiver? You know, can how you take that, me how there? Does feel? How does that feel? Obviously, a lot of parents. That's a good thing. There's ten years between me and you. Um, mm. So, I'm in the early stages. You're in the latter stages. And how does it feel for you knowing that your kids are not, not that they don't want you, but you're not their first thought anymore. It is difficult, um, and I'm sure all parents who maybe that's why older parents there is older parents now because they think oh they're missing something in their lives let's have another kid <laughs> because so many people are having kids in their forties and fifties now maybe that's the reason maybe because they are missing out on that need from the child they need the child doesn't need you anymore because they're doing their own thing. They're finishing school. They're getting a job. They've got girlfriends or boyfriends. You know, it is, it is hard. It, it's apparent for that because I notice on the playground that I'm, I'm still, I'm not young, but I'm not old. But no. I know that I'm still one of probably the, were the younger parents. In fact, I think we are probably the youngest of parents. And I think, well, I'm a perfect respectable age to be, you know, being a family man. I mean, I know my my mum was, my dad was at my at my age. They were when yeah. it. So, but I know that. Yeah, you're right. Right, and I know the oldest of parents are probably approaching fifties to mid fifties. And I think to myself, "Fuck me! By then, I want to be fucking relaxing." Yeah, but you see that. <sighs> Niles, fire alarm is going off. Change the battery, Niles. <laughs> okay. Uh, look at you. Don't even get your hands dirty. You disgraceful, lazy boy. <laughs> oh, no. And, and take it out and put it away. And, Where? And, put the, and put the tablet in and put the salt in every couple of weeks. And, and press the switch. <laughs> press the switch. It's fucking hard work, mate. Yeah, I wouldn't want to be one of these parents that you go to pick your kids up and the other kids say, oh, is that your granddad? Because I know so many that were like that. When I used to pick my kids up when they were at primary school, they were like eight, nine years old. And some of them were like, oh, your dad's well young, like about me. And it's like, yeah. <laughs> and then some of them were like really old, like in the 60s, they had all grey hair. Well, not, well, I've got no hair, but mine's shaved. So I'm not bald. And, uh, yeah, it's just some of them do look old. And I'm just wondering why why that situation happened. Is it a new relationship that then progressed and then accidentally had a kid? Was it planned when there, there's something missing in their lives, like we've said? I don't know. Well, I would... no, I've noticed as well that a lot of women now, because obviously I think I'm, but a lot of women are having eggs frozen and things like that it's obviously it's a big thing at the moment that people women, yeah. because they're not ready to have children yet so they're you know preparing for that, which is a good thing because i think the whole ivf thing i've seen i've seen it sort of you know from friends that it cripples couples and they have to go through ivf and they can't have children because they just left it too late yeah you, know, you don't know what your body clock is you don't know when it's going to say enough's enough you know blokes don't really know you know Blokes just realise they get a little bit tired and their testosterone is not the same. And not like me, yeah. supplement, king, supplement king over here. And, if I, and they wake up low, pop a pill. And they wake up in the morning and thought, oh, that used to be so different. No wood. No wood. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, like, oh, come on. Yeah, it is. Um, but then they again, like. Load, right? I did, well, that's a bit weird. Don't it's fuck your mattress now. Don't fuck your mattress. I don't know. Do you remember the people that used oh, dude, to? Uh, awesome. <laughs> there's so many adverts for male masturbation toys, and like in the old day, on every every advert, even normal social media, you see adverts now, and it's like, how is that allowed to be on there? Have you got? You know, one? no, I haven't. No. I'll send you one. 
That be that'd be the life, wouldn't it? <laughs> but no. Um, I'd, I mean, no. no. For me, having having a, a loving partner is the best um, option for that. Don't use a mattress or or some lube lube in the in the middle of a toilet roll <laughs> or anything like that. <laughs> That's desperate times. <laughs> yeah, well, I've, I've I've known people to do that before, but hey, hey. But yeah, going back to what you're saying about women freezing their eggs, etc. I think it's because career is very important to people nowadays. I think, and mm -hmm. it used to be you have to have a kid by the time you're thirty, or your body clock is ticking. But I think now it's like forty is the new thirty, because their careers are going well. They're used to the money, their lifestyle. And so oh, I can't ruin that with a kid. Not that it ruins but your life, but it changes your life. That, forty is the new thirty. I probably forty. You know, <laughs> they're in there. Yeah, 40, so you yeah. Know, they got us you, with. Can, you can you can say it, but your bones are not. Your bones are not. You got I hate right. forty. You got to remember. You look at. I always think of this. Look at your body like it's a car. Like, and if you're a forty-year-old car, you've got some miles on you. You know what I mean? You yeah. Take care of it. You've got to change, you've got to change the oil once in a while. And for me, like, I, I, that is so primal to my life clock. I don't know. You know what? You know what I'm like? I'm deep as shit. Yeah. In life. And my life clock to me is so important that I don't waste anything because, and I have to, re like, I have to have a reset once in a while. You know I do. Because mm. I get so bogged down in myself of what am I doing? Where am I going? what's happening i need to motivate myself and i'm in that stage again at the moment just like you do it you do it to yourself when you sort of regenerate yourself and pick yourself back up and change a few things mm. i'm a bit like that like I, i'm a bit like at the moment i'm a bit like so my health's important to me so i'm dieting i'm training i'm, I'm pushing i want to push quite hard um but then progression and i'm like i'm doing well i'm all right I'm all right financially i'm all right you know got a nice house and car on the drive and all that sort of stuff but then for me it's never enough i think i've got to achieve more my mind just goes you've got to do more you can't stop yeah. it's driving so it's always a weird place for me to be in because i always have to say right have a reset think about where you are think about what you want think about what you need to do yeah. and then i start going again but then you've done it many a times yeah not so much anymore i have like a, a goal you know, there's there's many opportunities I've had in the workplace in the in the the past year or so that I have sort of turned down because yeah, the money would be a lot better, but my life wouldn't, if that makes sense. It wouldn't yeah. be it wouldn't be right for me. So you know, the extra money would be amazing and it'd be like whoa. But I'm not gonna enjoy my life. You you have to money's not everything, and I've I think you only you only learn that as you get older. I think it's better to be in a good place mentally, a good place within yourself, within your home, within your friends and family. That no matter what money comes along, it's like no, that wouldn't that wouldn't last. Yeah, it'd be good for beginning, but then no, nah, it wouldn't last, and it, it's not the best for your for mental health as well because. You're gonna dread doing things. You're gonna hate doing things. Mm -hmm. And I don't you think have con you have to be content with what you do as well. Like if you're if you're content with what you're doing now in terms of work, and you think, well, that's my work-life balance. That's one thing done. Yeah, I'm happy, life. happy. And then you think, yeah. well, you know, I've got other sideline projects that I'm doing, and they're all flowing at a nice steady pace. Mm -hmm. I just think, from if anybody is, is always have something to strive for. You know, whether it be your body, your health financially even it just be something small like as if a holiday for example as long as you're pushing yourself towards something it gives you a reason just to keep going keep carrying on because yeah. it's so easy to get bogged down like, under any pressure and the problem is like I said talking about mental health is that blokes just don't talk about it they just don't all right mm. I can talk I can talk about picking myself back up and saying that I've got about a word myself but people don't really understand the backstory of that is actually the backstory of that is, you know, mentally you feel quite low to get yeah. to the motivation part. You've got to go hit the bottom part first to get back in yeah. the right direction. Yeah. And the problem is nobody talks about it. 
no one, no one talks about it. Fucking hell, like, I've seen more men kill themselves re recently because why? They don't talk about it. Suicide in men is massive. Exactly, they, bo they bottle it up. Oh, I'm fine, but I'm not. You know, it's, uh, yeah, you, know, you never see women commit suicide. Very rarely. Unless it's for, like, young girls for like online bullying and stuff like that but that's normally the only reason with with, with within the male species it's it's different levels different ages again it could be bullying at school uh workplace bullying it could be yeah. like mental health issues throughout their life so it's not just one sort of age bracket for men is it there's no, just so no, many no, so no, many no, factors no, you're talking you know. from the ages of 20 all the way up to 50 in men, Pro that, you know. Yeah. The, a lot of people don't realise that men go through, men, I think men, a lot of men go through some form, some form of menopause in terms of mental state. We go I through can't man I can't manopause, manopause. People always say that to me at work when I'm having a strop on. And I'm moaning at people. I say, oh, you've got the menopause is here. And it's like, fuck off. Fucking, I fucking hate that. Just my away from women. But I think men, you know, for one, they let things get on top of them and they just build and build and build and build. It's like an overdraft, isn't it? Once you're in it and you're in it and you're using it, it just gets bigger. And to the point where you're going, yeah, great. So I'm now going to clear an overdraft. And the mm. thing is, it, you're all like you're getting paid, and you're topping it up each time. You're building yourself back up. You're building your spirits back up. But yet, yeah, all the mental stuff is still sitting at the bottom. Yeah, so you're still you're still down there, even though you're trying to. And before before you, men don't realise is that you've got to deal with the stuff at the bottom first before you start trying to you know, rebuild in that in that sense. Mm. And it, it's a sad factor because it's it's so difficult. Like for even for me, I don't I don't discuss things. Not even my not even with my wife. Sometimes I like, I don't discuss how I'm feeling. I don't to be I'm honest, feeling. I don't I don't think you can always discuss it with a woman anyway, especially not your partner. I don't. Mm -hmm. I mean, obviously, you'd like to think you could, but there but there's some things as a as a woman Stop. that they won't understand. Because obviously, same as we won't understand some aspects of the woman's brain. I think sometimes you just need even an outsider, a, a male person you don't even know, maybe. I think that's why a lot of people go to counselling. Mm -hmm. Because their friends take the piss or they just don't understand and they're not really helping. And it just gets worse. I think someone who's like an outsider, someone you don't talk to that much at work, build a new friendship Go for a coffee. That's the thing, right? You don't know, I think as a bloke, I I mean, I wouldn't really know who to talk to. D depending, on, depending on what it was, mm. where do you bring it up? Where do you bring that context up and say to your mate, mate, I just want a bit of a chat, like I'm just feeling a bit shit at the moment. And, and, you know, yeah, and how, and how do you bring it up as well? Approaching those. It sounds easy. It sounds so easy saying it, but it's not. Not when it. Not when it's a, you know, not when it's a friend that you haven't spoke to in a few weeks because you've both been working and this and that, and you're not checking in on each other or you know. It, it it's it's different. It's so difficult. Like women will just have a chat. You know, they'll have a cup of tea and have a chat, and or they'll message each other and whatever. Or women will talk to other women very easily, or they'll post. They'll post about it and shit and yeah. I don't know. A man would be fucking. He'd feel like a like you said. He'd just feel like a bit of a dick there, innit? Yeah, they would. You see, you see quite often posts on Facebook from women, and they say, "Oh, I'm going through this," or I'll they, me they, I'll, me I'll message you, hun. <laughs> oh, fuck, I hate that. I hate that word, hun. It's so wow. I'll message you. I'll PM you, hun. Yeah, and you know, there's there's certain people that do it quite often like every month it's like oh you know go through a breakdown which there might normally, be which is fair enough but normally a week before payday <laughs> yeah that's, that's all of us but then it's like oh they're they're not happy again and it's like the same people message oh i'll pm you and it's like okay like they may be going through some real shit but i don't know it is you I'm get you know 
you know what I mean, don't you? Yeah. yeah. And I'm gonna be I'm gonna be a bit controversial now and then. There's somebody very not I don't know, someone I know well, know of really well, but like people that post their relationship drama on Facebook and places like that. They're like, good. I'm talking- <laughs> I'm talking in detail. I'm talking mm. like proper detail. And you, these couples that split up and get back together, you know what I mean? Like, like they're fucking playing tennis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, and they post all this shit, and then the, and she's like, "Just leave him, leave him. He's no good for you." And then she's, and then she's yeah. like, "Yeah, it's all about me and my girls now, and I'm sorting my life out, and I've and I've washed my hair, and I put the washing on." <laughs> yeah. And then you see, oh, we're back together now. He got his cock out and I, everything was fine. <laughs> <laughs> and he put his dick in the letterbox. <laughs> yeah, it's, everything's better. Yeah. Ha- happily, happily in love and better than ever. Yeah. Until next week when it's back we on our, Facebook. I know, we have, I know we have our problems, but... <laughs> it's just fuck off. <laughs> Like the kind of yeah. people that check in and check in at A and E. It's like if you're A and E in that much fucking pain for whatever reason you're A and E for, why are you checking in? Yeah, I would never check in. I, I'd take a photo first and then put it up. <laughs> I would. <laughs> you can't check in without a picture. No, I would do that. I'd put a picture up. They'd be like, oh, "Look where I am. I want sympathy. Ask me what's wrong with me. Come on." But you know, I'm just uh, an attention seeker sometimes. You gotta have a bit sometimes, now. You can't just, you know, it's, it's not. It's up, it's up to me. It's up to me. My my days are done. Like I have gone over because now I get memories of Facebook because like a lot of memories are over ten years old. Yeah, yeah. Oh, cringy, like cringe stuff, and it's like, who the fuck was I? <laughs> just a dickhead but it, 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 it it's moulded me right it's moulded me to who I am it's moulded you to who you are I mean I seen a picture of you the other day when you just had the uh, the goatee no no long bit oh uh, the, the old you, you, thin Craig David goatee yeah yeah yeah, yeah. all my ways <laughs> <laughs> and I was just like but yeah I don't know. Times for me, it, again, again, it's just another chapter now in my life. It's just another, just that little bit of fact. I'm getting older, but still, I don't know. You got, you've got, you've got, you got good things to look forward to. Mm-hmm. You know, young marriage, young child. You know, the only way is up. New house. You know, oh, life is good for now, baby. I mean, <laughs> It has its challenges, don't get me wrong. And then, because I was talking about when is, especially money, right? Money, everything goes back to the fucking coin. Mm. But money's never enough. No matter what, it, it, no matter how much you've got, it doesn't. And I, I, I chat to my wife about this now and again because obviously, I don't deal with finances. Everyone knows I'm financially free. I'm not yeah, you're not stretch, but yeah. I'm, um, <laughs> you're not allowed. <laughs> Not allowed. Oh, <laughs> Wifey yeah. won't let her. <laughs> it's a good thing. It is a good thing. Yeah, because you can blame her for any issues. <laughs> pretty much, yeah. It's I'm not like, me. Not me. <laughs> I'll buy what I want and then until I'm told, until I'm told off. And then I'll stop buying. You, you yeah, you keep, you keep going until you're told off. <laughs> My problem is, right, is I, you know, I do everything I need to do during the day. So I work all day. You know, I exercise in the morning, do school run, just clean the house, sort of wash, you know, all that jazz. Then I work, and I work, work all day. And after work, I do a bit more training. And after that, it's like, sometimes I can have a nap about four, five, just for like 20 minutes, half an hour. And then I'm like, I'm going again. I can <laughs> work out again. Or I can do something. Reset button. And then my problem is, this, though, is I, is I stay up late in the night. And when I stay up, I start looking at things to buy. I'm like, <laughs> Facebook adverts, Instagram adverts, shit on TikTok. Do you know I told you about those pallets? Like, the, yes. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The mystery box. The mystery box. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, God. The first one was brilliant. I fell for the trap. I fell for the trap. 
Because the first one was brilliant and cheap. By the way, they want to come on the show, actually. The outlet place. I want to take oh, nice. So Let's go. Fun. Fun to for a laugh, so. P- promote their want. shit. Promote their shit. I'm angry with myself <laughs> because I fell for the trap. First mystery box was cheap and it was good. Second mystery box was a little bit more expensive, but it was bigger. It was fucking terrible. It was shit. It was just full of crap. <laughs> so angry at myself. And I can't blame them because it, it's a mystery box, right? You you get what you get. Yeah. This... Like I've been thinking about setting up one of those big mystery boxes on eBay. Do you know what you pay like a thousand pounds for? Um, there could be a thousand pounds worth of stuff, or there could be like fifty quid's worth. Who knows? No, you have to have a minimum amount. This box is worth a minimum of twenty seven pounds fifty. But you sell it for fifty quid. <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah. But yeah, so anyway, fell for it, it was shit. Stupid. But then that's just another impulse evening by. Just stupid shit, man. Stupid shit. No, uh, some anyway. some Sometimes it's got to be done. Mickey, what is your topic this week? My topic... Let let me get the phone out. Oh, I am making horrible sounds. We've got a topic. Topic from me. Topic. Topic. Topic time. Topic time. Topic time. Oh, God. Why is it I have lists of the most disgusting things to talk about on my phone? For example, for example, for example, having sex with animals, would that create a human animal hybrid baby? Right. We're going to, I mean, we're just going to cut that one quick. It's like, it's like, a, like a sort of like a band aid. The answer is no, don't do it. Go to jail. Yes. Done. I saw a topic on, on Twitter about that once Terrible. and I thought, that's weird. Like gone. some people on. do that, though, don't they? But yeah, uh, what else do I have? Yeah, people that there's a there's a bloke on Twitter and social media called Joey Swall. You know that big massive Joey gym, Paul. yeah, the gym bloke Swole. who who commentates on videos. Like people mm-hmm. post videos on TikTok and and social media where they're trying to work out in the gym. And someone walks in front of them and they say, oh, they abuse him and rip him. And he rips them to shreds for being an egotistical fucker. I love watching them videos. He's he's an awesome bloke. But then that's so, that's so, it's been like that way for years. But then it's just not been as published. So now blokes are doing it first. Blokes are now getting in there going, have you not seen the videos of blokes going up to them? Are you you staring at me? Oh, I've not seen them. It's normally a, a woman filming doing squats with her ass hanging out, and there's a bloke that walks past a mile away from where she is and looks within like a quarter of a second, and she's like, "Oh my god, he's staring at me. He's stalking me. Oh, let's get this man cancelled. Kick him out the gym." And then obviously it gets back to Joey, and it's like, "Fuck yeah. off! You're filming. Anyone can look anywhere." There's, the th- oh, the truth is, there, there, there's, I, I, I believe I'm a strong gym go anyway so the gym etiquette is is nobody's looking and if you are looking they're not regular gym goers they're just ugh, the problem is it's so half and half this day and age it's so different the gym's not what it used to be it used to be if you was a gym goer you was a gym goer and you was a dedicated gym goer and you did yeah. you, you went there and you got on and you had friends that went to that gym but you weren't friends outside the gym and all different kinds of stuff but now it's kind of Especially, I mean, I'll go virgin. So you know, you know how pretentious it is. Oh, I, hate, I used to like going there, but then it got too stupid for my You've liking. Got half the people there that are, you know, they just they enjoy going. They make full, of, they make full use of everything, and they just go there to train. You've got the the, the major dem- demographic is is I'm not massively in shape, but if I go to a better health club because it's classed as a health club and not a, you know, like a rough and ready sort of. Gym, gym yeah. muscle head gym people go there because it's comfortable it's more comfortable to be there because everyone's in the same condition like even all the classes are in the middle of the building yeah yeah my thing is is if you're going to the gym right you just go and do your thing like it's become too much of a fashion show i mean honestly like 
gym trainers, gym outfits now. You People pay hundreds for gym clothing. Hundreds. I'm, I'm guilty of it. I've got fucking for like 150 quid trainers that I wear to the gym. And I'm thinking... Idiot. But, but for me, I get used to them because I run. So that, that's my... Uh, that's my excuse, and I'm sticking to it. You can't tell me what to do. You're not my real mum. <laughs> um, yeah. But yeah, so I, I for me, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I get it, like, and I get why people are pissed off because, like, you know, especially if you're a regular gym goer and you do take care of yourself and you and you want to film your progression, which is fine because blokes film their progression and there's form and everything else. I've seen. People I, get I used to. I used to. I made TikToks in the past when I lost mm -hmm. a few weight loss journeys. I've done videos, but. If someone walked in the way of me f recording myself, I wouldn't then abuse them and then moan oh, at them. I'd right. be like, oh, sorry, sorry. You know, I'm just trying to film myself in case they said something. But it's... Truth it's is, it, no, one's, no one's bothered it, in the gym. They're not bothered. It's, it seems to be the other way around. Like, especially with the social media thing now. I have no, no issue with people filming, taking pictures of themselves. Because like you say, progression... Is is good to see how you how you are changing your body shape is changing, mm -hmm. and the only way you can really do that is maybe doing it in the gym. But then you might be filming your exercise to see how your form is. You might be showing it to someone else, say, "Oh, your form's a bit. Try this, tweak this a little bit, and you'll see better results." So again, that's a good part of of, fi of filming. I've seen a lot of positive videos there. People yeah, know, like I've seen. I think I've seen. I think I've seen that Joey Swole. He covered a woman up. He was helping her lift, and he covered her up because obviously everything is on show, and she's lifting. Yeah, he covered it up. But he, women shouldn't have to cover up in the gym. Like if they want to wear those leggings to show their form, to show what's working for them. They, I don't think women are doing it for attention. I don't. Uh... Not the clothing. You shouldn't be. You shouldn't feel. Like you should restrict the clothing that you want to wear just because there's fucking weirdos out there. But then at the same time, you shouldn't be jumping the gun and going, "You're staring at me," because they're not. The people, the girls, they're normally late teens, early twenties. Yeah, the some of the outfits these girls are wearing, they're like hot pants, and they are so f so far in their their crevices. And they do squats. They squat in front of the camera. And then when anybody looks, it gives them uh, the chance to harass somebody. And it's like, excuse me, if you weren't virtually, na virtually naked in the gym. Now, I, I, I presume a lot of these are in America. No, you can't. I'm, I'm not supporting the women on this. No, I'm not. I, there's lots of people at my gym that have fantastic bodies, male and female. And they are not nearly naked while they're working out and you can still see the goodies so you know you can't call them goodies. <laughs> <laughs> no but if you're gonna look this is what i'm saying these people doing it wearing the clothing for attention yeah but then that's what i'm know, saying it's you can't say that clothing provokes people because it doesn't you shouldn't no. do that i'm sorry but if so if someone's near enough naked in front of you in the gym you're going to look whether you're a pervert, whether you're just thinking, oh my God, what they're wearing, or you're concerned of what they're wearing. It will get. It's not your, it's not your thing to be concerned. No, no. <laughs> no. Just, like blokes, just like blokes can't take their tops off anymore in gyms, you know? No, but if they did and women were looking, you could understand. They're looking, oh, look at him. He's nice. Or, oh my God, why has he took his top off? This is a gym. Why is his shirt not on? To be honest, the. You know, there's so many aspects to people staring. It doesn't always have the to be the, the seedy side of it. Yeah, no, no, of course, of course. So shut up! <laughs> but the etiquette's changing now. Anyway, I think we're a little bit behind on what we're talking about because it's changing now. People are now going for the more baggier clothing to the gym to, you know, people, you know, people wear bigger hoodies... Yeah, yeah. You know, for that, especially even blokes do it. Blokes, I mean, I wear. I wear hoodies, and hoodies when I'm doing weights, yeah. Because I don't. Well, I don't need to wear tight. I'm not that young anymore. Tight t shirts for me, those days are gone. I used and to wear that's... vests, and... big open yeah. loose vests in the gym. <laughs> like a twat. It, right? Yeah. That's it, is the fact that. Yeah. You've got, yeah. To, you've got to say the generation that like, I've seen younger lads in the gym where now 
I look at them and go, fuck me, that's not me anymore. I was the younger lad once, and I'm not the younger lad anymore. I'm the older one. So now I've got to just crack on with my shit. Like, you know, especially when you see a bunch of young lads all stood around a bench together and they're having a chat and while well, lifting weights and taking turns. And before, I would have thought, especially when I was similar ages to them, I would have thought, fucking dickheads, they should, you know, are they here to work out or have a chat? Now I'm like, do you know what? I remember being that guy that was having a chat with his mates in the gym. It, I don't know. It's one of them places where I don't think the etiquette will ever be right. It, you know, no matter what you go to, what you wear, what you do, you know, people are there either to show off, you know, people are there to date. Fucking hell, the gym dating scene, that used to be massive. You know, you used to see loads of people used to meet in the gym and stuff. Yeah, because it's a good place. You're both there for the sort of the same goal. So there's a common interest straight away. And then you say, oh, that's good. How's your workout? Is it good? Oh, yeah, it was not too bad. A bit tired today, though. And it's like, oh, okay. So then the conversation starts. Then you see him again the next week or the next day. And they say, oh, then, you're right. One of the things we should talk about is, is, is that let's talk about marriages and marriages and gym life because that is a that's the kind of subject that doesn't really get approached often is the fact that actually that you know if you're married and you're taking care of yourself mm. and you're you know trimming down or working out or bulking up are you doing something wrong what do you mean that, that's a, well that's the thing right everyone used to say oh you know if they're making themselves look good it isn't for you and all that sort of stuff and, why wouldn't it be well, it's the thing, like, you know, men and women want to take care of themselves. How many blokes sit at home and their missus go to all the classes under the sun, but yet blokes sit at home and drink beer? <laughs> no. Wink, wink. <laughs> I mean, I'll go, oh, God. I love the gym. I love it. I, I need to get, a, I need to find that love again. again. I've been, like, maybe four or five times this year. I was listening to something the other day and it said the best thing you can do is set a date in your calendar. A date of, I've got to meet that date. Like, this is a big date. Whether it be a year from now and you say, right, you know, the, I don't know, tw whatever today is, the 29th of April or whatever, 30th of April. Um, what's the date? 30th. 30, yeah. You know, 30th of April next year, my life is going to be in a completely different place. That's my clock. A year from now. I want to be progressed in many different areas of my life. I want that. I want the date in here from now, and that date's gonna. That plane's gonna leave whether I'm on it or not. You know. So if I make today is the day that I say to myself, well, I'm gonna set the goals that I want to achieve, and I've got a year to do it. And every day I've got to live that that goal. Yeah. And say to myself, I've got to keep pushing myself forward every single day, no matter how hard it is, no matter how much you procrastinate. And you fall back on that 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 goal. You've got to, you know, a year from now, you're going to know that day because it's on your calendar, and it's either going to be you either you met the goal or you failed. Okay. Sometimes I think just like I said, pushing that reset button, having those goals in your planner, doing what you set out to do on a daily basis, and saying actually, do you know what? Fuck it, I'm going to change everything. I'm literally going to change everything so I can. I think falling out of love with the gym is fine. Just don't fall out of love with yourself to do the gym. You know, you hating the gym is probably one of the best things you can do. Because as much as you hate it, you still got to go there. And the more you go there, the more you think, well, actually, I'm going to just go in, do the shit that I've got to do and get out. But you've still got to have that sort of love-hate relationship with it anyway. Yeah. Yeah, I'll be back there soon. I, I nearly went, I nearly went um, last night, to be fair. I was thinking about it because it's normally I'll, I'll watch a YouTube video or something, not a YouTube, uh, a TikTok or something. And someone's yeah. been working hard and they were really fat and, you know, they, they, they motivated themselves to, to get to the gym and to change their lifestyle. And I think, oh, yeah, I should go to the gym tonight, today, you know. <laughs> and I nearly went tonight, but then I had so much work to do and, you know, but I that's, didn't. That's fine. Like, having stuff to do is fine. Like, you've the, got things to do. The spark is it, there sometimes. Don't put it off. Shoot. And do it on that spark. Sorry. It's my son ringing me. I forgot to put my phone on silent. Sorry, me. Yeah. Yeah, don't... Just don't put it... Don't... 
as soon as you get that eureka moment of saying three two one i've got to go go because that is the best time to do it because at that point you'll be saying to yourself right well actually do you know what i know my i know my comfort zone and i know what's not my comfort zone and i know yeah i'm like i know for me i work i work out 10 times harder when i am knackered when i'm absolutely lifeless my... see i i find good excuses not to go when i'm tired i'll be like oh i'm really tired i didn't sleep well last night honestly yeah i, li- I literally have an espresso something and i think just i say go because now you're at your weakest part you're at your weakest part now so whatever you do on top of your weakest part you know that's you pushing yourself like yeah. I, I don't believe working out doesn't working out i'm not working out until i'm like in pain until i'm aching and sore that's when my workout starts for me wow he's like a motivational speaker now he's so not me in the gym I'll do what I need. I'll do what I need to do in the gym, or if I can't be asked, I'll do some and then I'll just fuck off home. But it's better than doing no no gym at all. So you know, you're doing well just to to step in the gym. So some people haven't stepped in the gym that day. Some people, some people haven't. So yeah. But what? Cookie. Seven. Eight. Nine. It's nine o'clock. It's not nine o'clock. It's eight o'clock. Uh, it must have been eight. Must have been eight. Must have, you can't count to eight. <laughs> yeah, I, can, I can talk you into the gym and I can talk you motivational. Oh, I love motivational speakers. I love them. I know you do. Fuck so. them. They are, <laughs> mate. They get me going. But honestly, the amount of I listen to, the amount of podcasts and motivational speakers I listen to is ridiculous. Yeah. I'd love I think I could be I think I'd like to do videos of motivational speaking you, d- you did started doing them on TikTok didn't you I remember mm-hmm. you did a couple yeah I did a couple but again for me confidence wasn't there I mm. wanted to, I, I wanted to say more I wanted to be for me when I'm working out and what I listen to is is angry stuff it's angry motivational speaking because it pushes me it's like coach pain Oh, loads. I lo- yeah, I, listen to I love Coach Payne. I listen to Eric Thomas, Les Brown, Joe Rogan, Jordan Pe- Jordan Peterson. Do you know much about him? No, he's that bloke with white hair, isn't he? It's on every Canadian. every podcast in the world at the moment. Canadian. He, he's so deep. He's just a very emotional bloke. But he's he, oh, he's just he, and he's not massively motivational. He's a he's a doctor. He's a psychologist more than anything, I think. Um, but he talks a lot of facts. It's yeah. kind of like the Andrew Tate thing. All the people that hated Andrew Tate, and I, I don't care really. I, I, I loved the meaning behind his videos, not the derogatory sense, but more the fact yeah. of the motivational side of what he gave blokes. And he's he's still on Twitter at the moment. He's obviously out of prison at the moment. Mm-hmm on whatever bail or whatever release he's on and he's got hair he looks weird of hair mm. but yeah he's uh he he does talk a lot of sense sometimes to be fair now i know a lot of women hate him because what he sort of stands for and what he tries to portray young men to be like owning women is like they're his property and that's obviously not yeah, what so we're going to support I, not, don't, I don't agree with that yeah. no so that's not what i agree with but empowerment to men mm-hmm. is just as important as empowerment to women. The women have all their friends together. They empower women, like big icons in the the industry, the film industry, the music industry. They empower other women, and I don't see anything wrong with certain men doing the same for men. Like we never really see that, do we? We don't have men yeah. that emp- empower other men to be better. It's not no. the same, and you, you get that when you talk about rights and stuff as well. With like, if you looked at women's rights, and you talk, look, you look at all these people that fight for rights for women and what they don't have. But if you look at this day and age, what rights do women have that men don't? Think of one, one right that women have that men don't, or men have over women. Well, they probably have more. St- I don't know. There's no rights. There's nothing different. There's nothing to stop me 
There's nothing stopping Getting them. pregnant? <laughs> that's all of it. That's a hold of a darker road. <laughs> <laughs> but no, yeah, the general right. consensus of it all, yeah. There's, there isn't a, there's nothing. Equality. Okay. Which, the, which the I, I don't... Which, women want equality, but then again, they also want men to do stuff for and pay for stuff, you know. And you they're, the, that's, they're the two scales, right? Mm, men, yeah, I'm not going now. Yeah, yeah, no, no, but they're the scales. Yeah. Like, you know, you're wanted on certain aspects, but then this, these aspects, you should fulfill them. Same as a male role. Male role is expected to provide and, and to put a roof over the head and to work and do this and do that and then come home and be the perfect husband. But then, I, I believe in balance. Like, fuck me, man. Me and my missus, we, we reverse the role sometimes. Not like that. Not like that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what's the strap? <laughs> oh, do you know, I, I, was, I was watching TikTok the other day. And it was like this documentary on swingers, and like, but like proper, proper low budget swingers. And some there's, bloke just goes, "Oh, I don't have you seen it?" There's a there's a couple of accounts on on there where they they bring friends over with it, and it's yeah. like, "What the hell?" Yeah, oh, I think I've God. seen some of them. This bloke literally goes to the fridge, pulls out his bottle of wine, and went, "That has been in my wife's snatch." Oh, <laughs> I've not seen like, that. Oh, Half drunk, put it back in the fridge. <laughs> it's like, what the fuck? Whole bottle, whole bottle's been up. <laughs> it's just like, you weirdos. No. I, I... Hey, in, interesting fact for you. Interesting fact. You know, I'm a big nerd. Yes. I'm, my, uh, I'm a Potter fan. Potter fan. So the other day, I have got. No, don't burgle me. So I found out I've got the other day. I've got a first edition within the first five hundred copies of Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone. Oh, you said that last week. Well, you mentioned something about a book. Yeah, you got you got a first edition Harry Potter book. So you still have reading it. Yeah. Or something. Yeah. And I didn't realise the other day that it was like a first, first, first edition, like proper within the first five hundred copies. Does it say inside like copy number or whatever? Mm -hmm. Or something like that. Like that. First edition. Copy. Yeah. 88, first edition. And there's only certain ways you can tell it's first edition. Like there's spelling mistakes in the book and errors. And, oh, okay. From the first print, um, yeah. Her name's like Jacqueline Rowling in it and all that sort of stuff, not J.K. Rowling. Um, all different little bits that you find. I didn't realise the other day. I was like, I've got a first, first edition. I was like, it's in frustine edition. Cling film that shit and put it in a box in the fridge. It's in a, it's in a box inside a box inside a shoe box. So I was like, I was like, yeah, I need to. And it's in a stored in the right temperatures. I was like, I've got to keep that. I've got to keep it. So we see how much that's worth. I don't know how you'd find that out. Let's have a look. Just to see if we can Google that. Um, first edition. I can't even spell edition. Fucking edition, edition, edition. Harry Potter. And, uh, Philosopher's Stone. How much worth? We're looking at here eight grand, eighteen grand, seventeen. Wow. Yeah, so that's thousands. Like, yeah, know. that's if you have it like if you have it scored and everything and all that and valued and I'm not Yeah, yeah, yeah. One. No. I think for me it's more said I won't sell it. I won't fucking sell it. I remember I remember getting that book. So I wouldn't okay. sell it. These are hardbacks, is that what yours is? No, you got, it's a paperback. It's a paperback. Uh, <clears throat> Let's see if there's any difference. I presume the that one will be worth more, won't it? Because that's the, the original bit that come out, paperback. Hundred pound, hundred and fifty, two hundred, 
Oh, well, that makes a big difference having a hard bit of cardboard on it. I suppose it was out earlier, maybe, I don't know. Yeah, see, mine's from 1997. Okay. So I know that, anyway, this is not interesting to people to listen to. But yeah, so I was like, I could keep this. It's like my heirloom. I don't have any heirlooms. Well, some people would be interested because there's a lot of book nerds out there right. who, who do like things like that. Book, books are on the the increase again. They're, they're coming back. People don't read a lot anymore. Like my no, daughter loves to read. Loves to read. Loves being read to. Loves to read books. Loves. She has a whole bookshelf, which is five. It's full. And loves books. And I'm, I, for me, I used to get lost in books. Yeah. As much as I, I, and I'll be honest, as much as I struggled to read in my younger years, I was a terrible reader, awful reader. But then I, I, I couldn't fall in love with a book. I couldn't get into it. I couldn't read more than three or four pages and be tired. And then I, 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 re- I learned to skim read as such and read it read it as I wanted to read it. Yeah. I, yeah, Harry Potter for me was the book that did it for me. I was, like, I was so excited. Well, the, De- the Deathly Hallows was the first book I, I ever read and didn't put down. I finished that in like two days. Any free time after work, I remember actually fini- finishing work at lunchtime one day and going to my mum and dad's house because they were both at work. And I sat in my old bedroom and read like 120 pages or whatever. I have never, ever done that in any book I've ever read in my life, apart from The Deathly Hallows, it's when nice that first came out. It? Yeah, It's a nice feeling to read and to be, mm. to, in, to be enjoying the story. Yeah, because it's like, oh my God. Cause, and then what I did after that, I'd seen all the Harry Potter films, but then I hadn't read the books. The, 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 the last book was the first one I read. So then I went back and read all the books and I thought, oh my God, there's so much that the film hasn't put in. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think actually when the Deathly Hallows book came out, they were only on film four, The Goblet of Fire, because I remember reading The Order of the Phoenix, number five, thinking oh, this film's going to be amazing. The film come out and it's like, well, you've missed half of it out, you know. Where's that bit? Where's all this bit? You know, so... The books, Deathly Hallows books, they were a lot darker. Mm. I mean, I I read them and then I read after that, I read, I went on from Harry Potter to Lord of the Rings. Oh, I can't, I've never been able to do Lord of the Rings. All when I was at school, could never do the first book. Never have, no. For me, it's about getting lost in something. Like getting lost exactly. In... And I do that yeah. in films. I do that in films. I have so many films in my brain catalogue where I'm like, I can do it. I can get into it. Like, and you, like, I mean, we, me and you have watched hundreds of hours worth of films together. Like, yeah. And I love fucking. Well, you love a horror film, but I love. You love fucking. <laughs> I love fucking as well. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that's funny. He forgot to finish the sentence. <laughs> oh, dramatic pause. Sorry. Yeah. No, I love fucking um, films. Um, but yeah, no, I oh got films for me. I'm a massive film nerd. Me and my brothers, ours, you know, yeah. the years of films I can talk to you about and fucking the memories that films hold. Mm. Very much so. I, I didn't think I was a nerd. I didn't think I was a nerd, but I am a bit of a bit of a nerd. A film nerd, not book nerd. No, because as I get older, I want to be more. As I get older, I I, I, I can appreciate. Do you know those like those eclectic old guys that are like to read and sit and sit in their chair and be quiet. Get, and... They gain knowledge and wisdom yes. that they can pass on to yes. their children and grandchildren my, my mindset now is the more older i get the more i want to learn like even now i look at courses that i can do and i you know even at the moment that's another thing again in my expansion of myself is i'm looking at things that i can do i'm, I'm in what area i could do do something a new mm. knowledge that i haven't got like i'd love to be able to speak more languages i'd love to be able to speak different languages yeah I used to do that. I used to, they used to go up WH Smiths and they used to have, you remember them? I don't know if it was a, a CD or something. You used to get a pack with the notebook, with the book that goes with the CD and you plug the CD and, you, and you'd repeat and it'd go through the book in stages that the CD information is, you know. 
I think I, I got the fluent in English. <laughs> Yay! Yeah, I got the jet. I did German at school, so I thought I was going to get German. I think I got the Spanish one to try and help me, and then I thought oh, I'll try the Italian one, and it, that just no, nah, it, it didn't. It didn't capture me. If that makes sense, you need something. Whatever it is in life, whatever you want to do or or achieve, it has to capture you on a different level to everything it's else. Stick. Yeah, it's got to stick. Otherwise, like it's not it. good. It's, you're going to get bored, and it becomes ugh. I hate doing that. And then you Numbers. just don't do it. Numbers never yeah. stuck. I was good no, at I'm maths. shit at maths. I'm shit I was at good. maths. I, I was good when I was explained to somebody had to explain <clears> it. I, I used to sit next to people that would be given something, and you know they'd automatically do it. For me, someone had to explain the reason behind it, and then I'd understand. Yeah, really why this in depth? Why this Once I've got equals? Got it. Yeah. Do you know like things like fractions and all that sort of <sighs> stuff and algebra mm. and all that? For me, it was like. The only numbers I need to know are uh, adding, subtracting, taking away, all that sort of the, stuff. The basics. Yeah, yeah. And then when I got older, I started talking about percentages. Now I understand percentages of percents and interest and all that sort of stuff. And, and I get all that. Mm. And that's all maths, right? But for me, it never, even now, it doesn't stick. You know, someone can explain my mortgage rates to me and how much I owe the bank, <laughs> how, how many years. And I'll, you know, oh my I'm, God. Oh my in my God. head, I'm just going. Yeah, yeah, can I have the keys now? Can yeah, come my house, please. Do what you want, <laughs> I'm like, I don't care. I'm like, I'm like hey, just, yeah, do what, it, do what you got to do. Um, so, uh, yeah, for me, maths doesn't, doesn't play, doesn't run for me anymore. So, but anything else I'm interested in, like, yeah. older stuff, history again. Fuck me, man, Discovery Channel for me is like a bit of a, it's like an up and down learning curve. I could pick any random thing on Discovery Channel and start watching it. Yeah, that's because the the brain is always there to to learn more, to expand. Mm -hmm. So, but yeah, but it just it's just whether you choose to take that jump, whether you yeah. can be bothered, it, whether it, you have time, whether you have the, the accessibility to, to actually do it. Yeah, you have to be bothered. You've got to want to do it. Because if you know if you're putting yourself under the pressure of doing something you don't want to do, then don't yeah. do it. Like, don't be doing it. But yeah. Well, fucking hell, we've rambled on for an hour, people. Thank you for listening. Uh, over an hour. Show of Dads, Lads and the Babs on a Sunday afternoon. Quite a light episode today, really. Quite nice. Yeah. Quite chilled out. Maybe we'll start doing this. We'll call it the chart episode and we'll, we'll have the upbeat episodes. And, but we spoke about a lot. We've covered a fucking lot from where we started. Yeah. Um, but again, another show, another week. Episodes are out on Monday. Yep. Thank you, everybody, for joining us for another show of Dad Lads and Babs. Deuces, motherfucker. <laughs> the Dad's Lads and Kebabs podcast is available to listen and download on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Amazon Music, Podbean, and all other podcast platforms.